us. It's uh, a great privilege to be in midst of you, dear brethren, in one spirit of God, acknowledging him as our creator and also through his son, Jesus Christ, who has enlightened us with his truth. And uh, it's a great pleasure when uh, hearing that you have been uh, drawn towards this truth, even though geographically we are so far away from each other, yet the Spirit of God has drawn us near to one spirit, to one faith, and also one hope. So, dear brethren, you have been listening to these classes for quite a long time. And I also being the fellow brethren, brother of Brother Raju, and he has given me the privilege today to share God's word uh, to my dear brothers who are urging to know more about this truth and come in a relationship with a father and a son and to live for them in the coming four days as we read from the scripture that what shall I render unto the Lord for all his good things, what he has shown to us through this great enlightenment which has been given to us, my dear brethren. So I believe that uh, most of the classes uh, have been uh, concluded and you have heard it and you have uh, really understood it and uh, you are uh, trying to know more about the scriptures. And uh, as we complete this studies, our question might be that what have I to do the next? Has uh, in the Acts we see that when apostles spoke about the good news, the people hearing it. And in the conclusion, they asked, what have we to do now? So you are in this time, in the same situation where you wanted to do something to the Lord or give something to the Lord in return for what he has blessed you with through various instruments, particularly Brother Raju guiding you all through the day, all through the studies and bringing you till here. And we believe and we hope you will continue to be with you all to start the good race and also you will be with us as we complete that race. So today, Uh, we will see a topic called the servant of God. So this word, the servant, is uh, being used amongst various Christians that I am the servant of God. Whoever is a preacher, whoever is a pastor, whoever is a reverend or whoever is any person who are into this service of God presents themselves as a servant of God. So as you all would have listened to this word very often, today we will try to go in detail about what is this servant of God 
what he has to do as a servant of god what is the benefit of being a servant of god and what life change has to be brought in us to be a servant of god and ultimately what privileges we have as a servant of god in this gospel age and in the ages to come right so uh i believe if someone can read the scriptures in english uh can anyone read to us uh, read the scriptures in the english brother Yes, we we all uh, can. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, will you read Ashish brother when I just quote the reference? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, brother. <clears throat> so, brethren, so as we know, brother would have dwelt with lot of subjects, and uh, you would have come to a uh, a place where you can harmonize the. plan of god you can harmonize the will of god now as you were before when you before, when you were before receiving this great enlightenment so as we know that consecration or what shall i render unto the lord for all his benefits towards me so we have to take the cup of salvation so salvation as brother would have already explained to you all that we being the bride of christ we being the sons of god to call him abba father and we being given an opportunity to bring this world of mankind back in harmony with god's in harmony with god's word so today as we all have told uh, that the servant of god topic uh, plays a very important role when we take this decision in our life why because this servant in the sense we will read one verse from there we will connect up to this subject that is matthew 23rd chapter 8 to 10 matthew the gospel of matthew 23rd chapter 8 to 10 but be not he called rabbi for one is your master even christ and all your brother call no man your father upon the earth For one is your father, which is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Okay. So here we heard our brother uh, reading the verse. It says, "He who is great among you." shall be the servant of all so this is the character what god requires from a consecrated child of god so servant in the sense if we give a definition for a servant it simply says one who comes to work with a master and he works for a wage and once he is not happy with the wages or if he is not happy with the master he has all rights to turn back or stop from the servitude so that is what the word servant means so now if we just go into the scriptures and see how many times this word servant is used in the bible we can see from the 
from the uh, from the book, nearly around eighty-four times this word "servant" is used in the scriptures. But my dear brothers, today, when you take a take the Old Test uh, New Testament and see the Greek meaning of this word servant or the Greek word for this word servant in English, it says delaus. D-O-U-L-O-S. Delaus. So delaus exactly means not a servant but a slave. That is what is a right translation for the word delaus, which means slave of God, not a servant of God. So now we have got a little bit of uh, uh, thinking that what is the difference between a servant and a slave. Now the scripture speaks as a slave and the translation comes out as a servant. We will just see to it how this happened. But now let us see the difference of what does it mean about a servant and a slave. A servant has got all liberty to change his master, to stop working for a master, or to have his own will to do the work. But whereas a slave has a different job to do. He is bound to work to a master. He has one master and he should be obedient to the master and he should do the things whatever the master commands him to do. That is what is the difference between slave and the servant. So now, let us uh, when uh, the apostles of the New Testament speaks about the word servant speaks about the word servant. They had a Jewish background. They had the ancestors of the Old Testament. And they know very well what was the work of slave in the Old Testament and what was the command which was given by God to the slaves and also to the, to the Jews, how the Israelites have to handle the slaves and how they have to take care of the slaves. So see, these, these all is a background from the Old Testament. And knowing all this, apostles uses this word servant, right? But now, now let us see in the Old Testament, in the Israelites, were there these two kinds of people existing, that is a servant by profession and a slave by profession, where these two offices existed in the Old Testament, right? So let's read the book of Leviticus, 22nd chapter, 10th verse. The book of Leviticus, 22nd chapter, 10th verse. There shall no stranger eat of thy eat of the holy field, or sojourner of the priest, or an hired servant shall not eat of the holy field. Ah, continue with the eleventh. Also, you continue. But if the priest buy any soul with his money, he shall eat of it. And he that is born in the in his house, they shall eat of his meat. Okay, so 
this verse very clearly distinguishes the two class of people who were there in midst of the israelites in a house of a master so one in the 10th verse it says no stranger shall eat this holy thing or the hired servant that means the hired servant who comes for a wage he does the work he goes back to his home and does his own works over there but the 11th verse says but if the priest buys any soul that means if the priest has had an opportunity to buy a slave to work in his house he can eat of this holy thing so why i gave you the scriptures there are, there were two set of people who were already there in the midst of israelites one was a servant who was for working for a wage the other one was purchased by money and he was to be a slave in the house of israel so this is what i want to make you understand so now as i told you brethren now what we can do is as i told you that the apostles knew what was the meaning of a servant and what was the meaning of a slave so when the apostles address themselves in the gospel in the letters they address themselves as a slave not as a servant but the translations were diluted putting in place of the the original word slave they started to put as servant this is what was uh, the uh, translations which were uh, happening in the first century uh, sorry in the during the translation time for example when you read apostle paul's letters to all the churches at that point of time he was addressing himself as a slave not as a servant for example we'll read one or two verses which can make us understand the exact word and the importance of that word romans first chapter first verse romans first chapter first verse Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated under the gospel of God. Uh, brother, uh, can you just read one second, please? Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, okay. Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ, right? But when you check the diaglot, there you can find the word delaus being used and the greek number is 1401 the greek word delaus having a number g number as 1401 that means it is slave so if you have a diaglot you can check this verse particularly romans 11 where it says i paul the delaus of christ that means i paul the sir, the slave of christ that's what he represents himself as so that is very important where in the translations it was diluted a little and we'll see why it was diluted uh you can uh, read wherever he addresses you can read all this uh, the introduction letters i'll just give you one or two i will give you one or two things uh, next if you after the class you can read all these verses and check philippians first chapter first verse also he represents himself as a slave of christ and again you can see galatians first chapter verse 10 again it it gives how paul understood the word delaus and exactly what was the uh, character of a slave we can read this verse galatians first chapter 10th verse
Can we read this, brother? For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I had pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Ah, here also, if you check the diagram, I would not be a servant of Christ, he says. But the same word delouse is used over here. That means I would not be a slave of Christ. So here he exactly understands what a slave means in the Jewish community. So only stress, if I was trying to please men, that means I have got a master to please. So if I don't please my master, if I start pleasing men, I can't be a right slave who has the right obedience towards Christ, he says. So that what, sir, he he means to address the church about the character of a slave or the profession of a slave, right? So now, when you come back again to the New Testament and when you check the different translations, in most of the places wherever the word delaus is used, it is the exact word is slave. But in most of the translation, they had translated is a servant. So this dilutes the profession of that person. So now what we can understand is in King James Version, KJV, how many times the exact word slave is used? If you just check, it is used only once in KJV. In what context? Uh, context they use this is when Paul is addressing to a slave the the what means the the say the slaves uh, at that point of time how they should be with the master this is the only place when addressing addressing to a slave Paul uses this word as slave and the translators have kept this word as it is retained because he was addressing addressing to the slaves of that time. This you can see as an example in Ephesians 6th chapter 5th verse. Ephesians 6th chapter 5th verse. Okay. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling. In okay. Of your heart, to okay. Okay. I just gave you this just uh, kindly just read the scriptures after this class. Here also, if you, uh, I think uh, brother is using uh, the different translation, but in the King James translation, if you just check, this is the only place where he says, slaves be <laughs> obedient to your master. So why I am emphasizing this verses, here also the word delouse is used. And the right translation is retained. Why? Because he is addressing, addressing a slave. Right? So this is what is the thing. So now, uh, why the transla translators would have changed this um, the word slave as servant? If you just have a uh, thought, brethren, during the translation period, that is 15th century, 16th century, if you just stay, check, the slavery in the Western countries, the European nations, all these places were, was at the peak. And the slavery was to that extent that they were used as animals and uh, they were killed as animals. So that was the condition in the world. You would have uh, seen the history of mankind. So, during the translation, when this was to the great extent, the slavery was practiced in the world. <coughs> the people who saw the word slave in the Bible would think that this slavery is encouraged in the scriptures. So in order to avoid this, the translators would have given 
translated the exact word slave into servant that is what we can just understand why this was done right so this is one thing what you can check in the scriptures so now what we shall do is we should know exactly what was the work of a slave in a jewish community in the midst of israelites what was the work of a slave or how a man was how a man can be changed to a slave in the israelite community community okay so there are three ways in which a, a man can be uh, converted or changed or enter into a slavery by three means in midst of the jews number 1 one when he can become a slave as when he has a poverty or when he has undergoing when he is undergoing lot of uh, uh, financial problems so he can he has lost all his property and he has nothing to further survive he can himself present uh, as a slave for any master who purchases him that is how he can become a slave of a master that you can have a, a scripture uh, leviticus chapter 25 verses 25 leviticus chapter 25 verses 25 if thy brother be waxen poor and hath sold away some of his possession and if any of his kin come to redeem it then shall he redeem that which is brother soul 39 you can read in that same sister brother 25th chapter 39th verse and if thy brother that dwelt by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant ah uh, here in, in uh, the old testament Uh, instead of uh, again here putting the word as slave they give a different word as bond servant one who is in bondage with someone but here also the word slave has to be used so the translators technically change the slave word into bond servant in the old testament so wherever you see bond servant that was that has to be replaced by the word slave so here we saw one way through which a man can become a slave is when he loses his property and he is entering into a into a poverty line where he has nothing to eat or nothing to survive he can become a slave for a master one thing second one when he is caught as a thief when he is theft something and he is not able to return the theft money he has to be a slave to a master or the place where he has thefted he has to be there until he gives that price that money you know to come out of a slavery this is the second option the third way through which he can become a slave is uh, for the second also you can read a verse uh, so that it will be useful for you Exodus twenty second chapter first verse first and third verse Exodus twenty second chapter first and third verse. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox, four sheep for a sheep. Verse three: If the sun be rising up with you, there shall be blood shed for you. For his rightful restitution, if he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. Ah, that is uh, third verse says he has to sell his soul until he gives that money and retains himself. This is the second option. The third one is as a as a slave is married and he gets a child, that child can be a part of a slave category. why because since the parents are slaves this children also can be can be entered into a 
slave uh, place. So this is a third uh, option or the third means by which a person can become a slave. Third, if you want, you can write the reference. You can read afterwards. Exodus 21st chapter, 7, 7th verse, you can uh, just note down. Exodus 21, 7 very clearly says that if a person or a parent who, are, who bear the child, that child can be a servant or slave, right? So this is what is very important, brethren. So in entire scriptures, you see most of the places, the word slave is taken out and replaced by the word servant. In some of the translation, they use it as hired servant. In some of the translation, they use it as bond servant. Right? This you can keep in your mind. So now, I just told you how a person can become a slave. Now, I'll just give some references from the scripture. How can a person be relieved out of the slavery? Or how a person can be taken out of the slavery? How it is possible? So these are the uh, things. So now, we can see this also. Jewish people were following seven years rest or seven years Sabbath. Brother would have taken all these classes about Sabbath and all. So the seven years, the seventh year is a Sabbath. And the seventy and the uh, Jubilee, brother would have taken. So Jubilee, the 50th year is a Jubilee. So these are the things which the Israelites were following. So once a servant was to be purchased, the master will see when is the next Sabbath year. So based on that time only, they will fix the price for the slave. Why? Because on that Sabbath year, the seventh year, the slave has to be let out by the owner without any cost. So this is the, or this is the uh, thing what the Jewish people were following. Who were rich, who had, afford, who had the affordability to buy a slave, was paying the slave for the slave based on this sabbatical year. That is the seventh year or fiftieth year, like this. So these are the times where a slave, a person who is entered into a slavery, can come out of it. So that is one thing. So the next uh, that you can read in Leviticus twenty fifth chapter fortieth verse. If you want, you just write down the scriptures so that uh, uh, I can uh, finish up the things. Okay, uh, Leviticus twenty fifth chapter fortieth verse says the year of jubilee. The slave has to be uh, let off without any repayment. That is one thing. Uh, again, the sixth year of complete, uh, the seventh year start, the slave has to be let down. If you want this also, you can write the scripture, Exodus 21st chapter, second verse. And uh, Exodus 21st chapter, second verse. And uh, Deuteronomy. 15th chapter, 12th verse. Deuteronomy, 15th chapter, 12th verse. And the other means by which the person can come out of slavery is if a master has purchased him for a money and if that master dies without any children, the slave is free to come out of slavery. So these are the things what... Uh, Exactly, the Old Testament, uh, God had commanded, given the command for the uh, Israelites, how they have to uh, maintain this uh, slavery or how they have to uh, behave with such people. That's what they were, it was given. Okay. So, again, what is the special privilege? What is the special privilege for a slave? Means, a person goes into a house as a slave and the master treats him very well and he likes the master so much that he doesn't want to depart from the master and he wants to continue to be a slave in that house until he dies. If he decides that, 
he has got the privilege to do so and the master also can accept that and keep him as a slave until he wishes so this also was a was a special privilege given to a slave if the master is satisfied and if the slave also is eager to work as a slave until he dies this you can read in exodus 21st chapter 6th verse can you read this brother to us exodus 21st chapter 6th verse okay then his master shall bring him unto the judges he shall also bring him to the door or unto the door post and his master shall bore his ear through with and all and he shall serve him forever ah uh, here there is one tradition or one uh, uh, ritual which was been carried out uh, in the jewish community once the servant acknowledges that he doesn't want to leave the master the master will bring that slave in front of the elders and uh, he will as a gesture of being the servant as a slave for ever and ever he used to bring him near the door post and he used to bore the ears and put a what uh, the earring uh, to that slave and say he is the slave for me for ever that was the ritual which was happening over there okay brother so now when god had given all these things in midst of the israelites the commandments and how they have to deal with the slaves of such kind and how the person uh, who enters into the slavery can be uh, relieved out of it all this was commanded by god and also god had said the israelites how they have to deal with their fellow jewish people who were the slaves right this was very important that if you want you can read uh, uh leviticus 30th chapter uh, uh, 25th chapter 30th verse leviticus 25th chapter 30th verse yeah brother yeah i am the lord your god which brought you forth out of the land of egypt to give you the land of canaan and to be your god ah uh, 10th verse in that you can you read brother same chapter 10th verse okay and you shall hello the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto the all the inhabitants thereof it shall be a jubilee unto you and you shall return every man unto his possession and you shall return every man unto his family ah uh, see all the slaves can be can be let free and they can start their own life and uh, can you read 43rd verse in that brother please 43rd verse to so shall not rule over him with rigor but self fear thy god ah uh, see that how have we to handle the slaves was given by the jews uh, for given was given by god to the jews it's he says do not illiterate uh, do not ill treat a slave or with rigor but he, because he is your fellow israelite due to some circumstances he is become your slave so don't treat him in the way which the uh, in the way which really hurts him that is what was a command which was given by god you can read uh, deuteronomy 15th chapter 15th verse deuteronomy 15th chapter 15th verse those shall remember that thou was a born man in the land of egypt and the mm. lord thy god deem thee therefore i command thee this thing today ah here he says you were also slaves at one point of time so how i dwelt with you in the same way you have to deal with your fellow israelites who have sold themselves as a slaves to you so this is what is the uh things which were spoken to the israelites in the old testament so brethren why we saw all these things are the jewish apostles who had a jewish background knew exactly what was the profession as a slave and what was a slave's character 
and what was the slave's work to the master. So only when they addressed themselves to the church, to the congregations, they addressed themselves as a slave of Christ. Right? So this is what is very important. So now what shall we, uh, sh what shall we do is, in the Old Testament, we saw so many things. Now let us come to the New Testament. During the time of apostles or during the time of uh, Christ, what was the condition of uh, Romans who were ruling Israel at that point of time and how were the slaves treated, right? So Romans uh, were very shrewd, very cruel people and uh, the slaves were treated in such a way that they, were, they had no freedom, they had no rights, they had no legal, uh, any uh, court or anything to fight for their rights. So this was the condition of a slave during the time of, uh, what I can say is, uh, about, uh, during the time of apostles, right? So, uh, uh, if you just go through the scriptures, we have one instance where this, uh, this profession or uh, uh, letter of Philemon, uh, whatever Paul writes to Philemon, he writes about the escaped slave only. That is, on Onesimus. Okay, Onesimus was a slave who was who ran away from uh, Philemon and opposed, meets him in the jail. With he had a, a interaction with the uh, with Apostle Paul in the jail, and Paul converts him as a believer. So he sends Onesimus back to Paul uh, to Philemon, saying, "Treat him as your fellow brethren." So this is the instance what uh, we can read in the scriptures, correct? So now uh, what we have to check now is we have seen uh, some of the characteristics, what is required in a slave and how a slave has to be and how the uh, master has to treat him. All these things we just look from the scriptures. Now we have to come consolidate things and see what should be the characteristics of a slave, right? So now five things we have to see. We have to see nearly four things what exactly a slave's character should be. One is the complete ownership of a master. He has only one master to serve. Even if he is sold to a master, he cannot serve the other master also along with one. So this is first one thing. The, the master who has purchased him has an absolute ownership towards that slave. The second one is a slave has to always obey the master's command in whatever way it has been given to him. The third one is he should be subjected to the master's will. Nothing other than this, he can do anything of his own will than the masters. The fourth one is, he has to be completely dependent upon the master for every needs of his life or for, for every wants, uh, needs which he requires a daily, day-to-day -day in his life. So this is the characteristics of a slave when he enters into a slavery, when he is sold to a master. So now, let us just come back to the spiritual understanding of this profession. Let us put here the characters of slave in our life. That is what I gave you the key text as uh, Matthew 23rd chapter 8 to 10 verse. It says, Whoever or greater among you should be slave of all. So now if you read the scriptures, it gives a different, deeper meaning of the word slave than the word servant. Right? Very important, my dear brothers. Because servant dilutes the profession of a slave. 
but when you when you henceforth read the word servant replace it with a slave word and read you we will know the deep meaning of the word slave and we being the slave of christ what should be our characters right so now we know very well we have been called we have been uh, given an opportunity to know the truth and to understand what is the true meaning of following christ how we have to deny ourselves take up the cross carry it till we die and if that is the case we have one master to serve that is our christ that's what christ says you cannot have two masters you cannot serve two masters so we have seen this through this wonderful light we have seen that one is our master that is christ so that is what in the matthew 23 he says don't call everyone rabbi there is one master to you that is christ so that one thing first we have to understand my dear brothers because here we can uh, we can see what important it is why because our master lord jesus christ have purchased us not just by giving a amount but by his blood first corinthians 6th chapter 20th verse first corinthians 6th chapter 20th verse brother for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's ah uh, see brother see here it says ye have been brought for a price what is that price read first peter first chapter 19th verse first peter first chapter 19th verse but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot ah here what is the amount uh, that our master is paid for us is to make us slaves his his precious blood so brethren when we read uh, in this context as a slave we know that we have no options to be a servant who is who comes as an hired person to take a wage from the master and if he doesn't want to work with the master he has to go on his own will and wherever he wants that is not the case of a slave of christ as we have come into this enlightenment by immersing ourselves into the death of christ that is baptism we immerse ourselves in the death of christ what is the death of christ dying to this day to this world daily dying to this world daily so once we start this process of dying to this world daily that is what is a real baptism in which we are going to enter into once you make a covenant with god to die in the death of christ you become a slave of christ that is how you convert yourself to become a slave of christ so now as a master is purchased us he is not like the master who we were obeying for so many years without coming into this light of truth that is satan so that master has really not brought us or treated us as a good slave but the that master has brought us death and degeneration but once we are seen by 
Christ our master he had compassion on us and he's taken out yes purchased us from that slavery he has given the price and took us away from that cruel master satan and he's brought us by his blood and now christ becomes a master right so now brethren he has set us free that is what john 8th chapter 36 verse speaks about john 8th chapter 36th verse the son therefore shall make you free you shall be free indeed ah now the new master that is god's son or our redeemer has set us free and we are becoming free indeed now when you enter into this covenant of sacrifice so these things we have to understand my dear brothers so here whatever is whatever it says Uh, brethren very important is that that now we are under the great master or the compassionate master that is our lord jesus christ and how he treats us that is what is important he doesn't treat us as a slave as a bond servant or cruelly but he considers us as his friends and that is why that is how he treats us john 14th chapter 15th verse john 14th chapter 15th verse if you love me keep my commandments ah uh, 15th chapter 14th verse is read brother john 15:14 you are my friends if you do ah. what them i command you ah you are my friends and you do whatever i command you that's very important correct <coughs> so this master doesn't treat us so cruelly he treats us as his friend you can read the 15th verse in that in short i call you not servants for the servant know it not what his lord does but i have called you friends for all things that i have heard from my father i have been known unto you ah see here he differentiates himself he says henceforth i doesn't call you slaves but i call you friends see the difference of uh, the way how he treats us uh, as his slaves he says i no longer call you as servants there also the word delaus is used 41401 is a number you can just check in a dialogue diaglots it says very clearly i henceforth don't call you as slaves but as friends why because to a friend we open our hearts and say everything so like that christ has not uh, not uh, uh, hidden hide anything from us so that's what he says brethren so in this way now with this understanding about the character of a slave or the profession of a slave wherever the word servant is used you try to put slave and reader it gives lot of meaning it gives lot of understanding how as in the coming four days if we consecrate ourselves to the to the master how should be our characters how should be our behaviors what should be our uh, understanding about a slave we don't we have to stop having our own will we should have the will of the master and we should obey constantly to the master's word and we have to be, approach him for all our needs and he will provide it to us so these are the things which comes into our mind when we utter a word slave of the of our master christ jesus right so this is what is important very important and uh, uh when when you see a lot of uh, things uh, uh in again uh, in this uh, christ he says uh, 
Matthew 10th chapter 24th verse. Matthew 10th chapter 24th verse. Disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his lord. Uh, here also, you check the diagram. It says, the disciple is not above the master, nor the slave above his lord. So, here Christ says, whatever I have undergone, you have to undergo as a slave of mine. Because I have purchased you by the blood, and I want you. I want to give a bright future to my slave. So you, if in this life walk as I command you, you will be given. You will be. You will be uh, freed from sin, and you will be the slave of Christ at the most. That's what is very important. So for so many uh, years, even though we were by name, probably as Christian, but we didn't know the harmony of the scriptures. We didn't know the will of God. We wouldn't have understood exactly the will and the, and the desire of God. But now understanding this slowly, we what have we to do? So now, brethren, for so many years, we were slaves of our of one master who was so cruel, who was taking us towards death. But now our Lord Jesus Christ saw our condition, took pity on us. He paid the price for us by his blood and he has become our master. Now, brethren, that we have to not use our self for the as a servant of sin. That's what is very important. John 8th chapter 34th verse. John 8th chapter 34th verse. John 8th chapter 34th verse. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Ah, so we were the servant of sin and we were using all the organs of the body for sin. Now, henceforth, we should use this self or our flesh or our being to be the servants of God or Christ. Very important, brethren. This is what is a transformation what is required from us as a slave. Okay. So now, let us see the master who has purchased us. Was he a slave to someone? We have to check. Right? Was he a slave to someone who is a master now? Philippians, second chapter, seventh verse. The book of Philippians, the letter of letter to Philippians, second chapter, seventh verse. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. Ah, uh, brother Hans, you read the scripture, it says he he made himself of no reputation and took upon the form of servant. It should be a slave. He took the form of a slave and was made in the likeness of men. So Christ also is a slave to a master that is our creator, that is our almighty God. Once our almighty God brought him into this world, he developed the characters of being obedient to him to the utmost, to every word, to every dot and tittle, he was obedient to God. That is what is the nature or the character of a, a good slave. That's what it says. Once he came here, 
he was not acknowledging himself in a high position or without trouble or without giving himself as a ransom but in turn he made himself of no reputation he took up all the things what was permitted him by god and he acknowledged all the troubles the ignoms all the things what he he had to undergo and uh, to that extent he became that he became he took the form of a slave so now we know the characters which the slave has or what is the profession of that word slave obedience wait on the master for anything know the master's will all the time and uh, you have to you cannot change your master as you will so these things knowingly now when you read uh, that christ was he took the form of a slave that means he was a slave to his father so the same way that slave is now the master of the church that slave is a master of each and every one who wants to consecrate their life and walk according to that master in the way which he walked with to the father with the father to please him in the same way that master wants his slaves to walk in his footsteps to be a good slaves in this world by obedience so these things uh, uh, comes into the picture my dear brothers and sisters so this things uh, <coughs> what uh, what you can understand is uh, now as we saw there very very beautifully that once we became a slave of the master that is jesus christ now christ has acknowledged us and we being the slaves of christ now doesn't want to leave our master we want to be with them forever being the slaves of him in whatever condition it is so what happened in the israel in the israel ritual is once the slave acknowledged that he wants to be ever and ever with the master until he dies the master used to bring near the doorstep and he used to bore the ears of the slave and acknowledge that he is his slave forever in the same way now as we have come into this enlightenment god has given this wonderful truth he know now we know what is the plan of god and we know what part we have got in this plan of god and how we have to be in this world a sacrificing christian a self denial christian taking up the cross and uh, walking in the steps of our master and once we acknowledge this by the immersion or the baptism into death of christ we become the new creation so the new creation's work is brethren to transform our mind the transformation of mind is required for us so that we become as romans 828 says that we become what was the father's will that we all become in the image of his son jesus christ so now as a servant when we take up the decision of living henceforth for christ and his brethren and his church brethren the names of us are not written in this world church books but it is written in the heavens that we being the church of christ in heavens and christ being a master takes care of us wherever we are and which part of the world we are we become the part of the church that is one body of christ so now as we enter into the slavery or we enter as a slave completely depending on the master and to obey him we say or we acknowledge that ends for we doesn't want to leave our master or we doesn't want to uh, stop 
working for the master or doing the job of the master master make a uh, bores a uh, year in us uh, bores the hole in the year and makes us the permanent slave sams 40th chapter 6th verse sams 40th chapter 6th verse <coughs> Fear took hold up in them there, pain as a woman in trouble. Uh, brother, Psalms 4-0, 40th verse, 6th, uh, 40th chapter, 6th verse, 4-0. Sacrifice and offering, though did not desire, mine ears as they opened, from the fringe and sin offering, was no record. Ah, uh, it says, thou hast pierced my ears. That's what it says here. So, who gets pierced his ears is only the slave. Once uh, the slave's ears are pierced, the master's name is written in that ear ring saying he is the slave of such and such master. So, brethren, now it is not by accident or by chance that you have come into this wonderful light or the truth which is being proclaimed to you, it is only by the grace of God, by the Spirit of God, He has seen something in you all to glorify God in your life. He has given this opportunity to, to you all. That is what is important. So we all have been so blessed that He has pierced our ears by the word of God, by the word of truth. As I told you in the beginning, we all would have been Christian for so many years by name. But now, we have come into the knowledge of truth and we know exactly what a Christian life is in this world, in this gospel age, and what is Christian's future hope in the coming fourth years. So, as yes opened our ears to know this truth, he will continue to be us, be with us until we become a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him until we die. That is what is a covenant. So, brethren, sir, so these things, we have got a lot of things sir, to cover up, but since sir, we have got very less time, I just gave you a very briefing on this sir, word, uh, servant of God. Right? So now, henceforth, Wherever you read servant, put yourself a word slave and read the scripture. It will give you a great meaning of for what we are being called. Okay. So one small thing I would like to say is there is one Bible translation which is called the Good Speed Bible. There is one Bible translation by name Good Speed. It's a it's a American author. He who translated uh, this uh, version, it is uh, called an American translation. You can check in the net. It is called, it is also uh, known as Ye Ye Ki version. An American translation version. 1935, it was translated by a person called Goodspeed. He was a scholar, right? So once you take that scriptures, that Bible, and when you cross-check, wherever the word slave, the original mean, the original Greek word or the Hebrew word for slave is used, he translates everything as slave instead of servant. Try to have this uh, search, you will get it. God willing, I have got that Bible. If you want, I'll just send the uh, pictures to Brother Raju. He can, he'll forward to you also in these things. Because there in that Bible, wherever the exact word or the meaning for the word delouse is used, this, all the places that brother uses the word slave and gives a lot of meaning for the followers of Christ. Right? So these are the things, brethren, sir, that uh, we have come into. And uh, as you all have been listening to this uh, uh, truth for so many days, for so many months, you would have 
come to a place where you have to think where i have to go and uh, at times the ways are closed but brethren if we wait on the lord as he opened the sea for the israelites to walk in the dry sand of red sea the same way if you or me sincerely ask god what is what should be my next move and what should where i should end where i should uh, go or what i would what have i to do he will open the way and say this is the way walk in this i will give the eternal life to you or the immortal life brethren so these things are all uh, uh, very important where you have to uh, see the things so as i told you once we have changed the master christ becomes a master now and he has compassion on us and he is doing all the things what for the benefit of the slave that he gives us liberty he gives us his word he bores our, our ears he has pierced our ears to open our ears to listen to this truth and he is going to give us the everlasting life if we become obedient servants of him right so these things uh, brethren have in your mind and uh, uh, most of the things uh, you can read and as i told you in the as i told you in the scriptures in the old testament we saw the slaves had a special privilege in the priest house to eat the holy bread or the shew bread which was kept in the tabernacle no hired servant was permitted to eat it but the bond servant that means the slave has a great privilege <laughs> to eat of the shoe bread of the pre in the priest family or in the priest house so has we today brethren are into this great enlightenment we as a servant of christ desired to follow him all through our life henceforth and as romans 12 chapter 1 and 2 says that my dear brethren i beseech you by the mercies of god present yourself as a living sacrifice to god holy and acceptable to him this is what is a right sacrifice he says and the second verse says transform your hearts so let us transform our hearts to be a good a right and the honest servant of christ in the coming four days and uh, acknowledge or give ourselves to him to purchase us by his blood and to continue to be our master until we die and stand for this truth and stand for the uh, truth what we have heard without any hesitations my dear brothers and sisters so these things uh, are very important for us uh, to understand so god willing uh, in the coming four days also because now since he's open our eyes of understanding he's open our ears there are a lot of things still our master is ready to give to us as we read the scriptures he knocks at our hearts if we open it unto him he will come he will serve us with more bountiful food which we are not worthy to receive it yet in this last days he has bountifully opened his treasures to give us the meat in due season and uh, to keep us away from this world and to make us more and more the slaves of christ and uh, until we die let us take a oath and uh, let us take a oath uh, saying henceforth let my life be for christ alone and christ alone so as you know brethren sir uh, uh, it is almost you are completing your studies uh, your scriptures so continue to be in your prayers ask god what should be your next move or what should be your responsibility or what should be your next course of action 
and uh, god willing so you will consecrate your life to to christ and to our father and walk in the narrow way which is right in the sight of god so if god willing we will meet again uh so keep this all in your mind kindly read the scriptures what was given to you as a reference today and uh, and, and try to understand uh, the real meaning of the word delouse that is slave thank you my dear brothers so the tony yeah so i just want to share some of the verses that i checked double yeah. check yeah yeah um, for example uh, psalm 46 uh. <laughs> psalm 40 chapter 40 verse 6 aha uh -huh. <clears throat> in case we it it it's uh, it, uh, it is written like my ears has the open okay but in, but in my way but in my way it's particularly translated like this but my ears you have pierced Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, there are a lot of translation uh, differences in the different uh, uh, verses. So that's what I gave you the uh, one uh, in to you about the good speed uh, and American translation version. If you take, if you come across that in the net, uh, you can check that version. That version, uh, whatever I have given you today, the reference, everywhere you can find the word slave being used with the exact Greek word delouse. that is 1401 right and uh, if uh, uh, god willing i will just send you the snaps of that uh, bible which i have got in my uh, uh, in my position i'll just uh, share it with brother raju you can just uh, uh, he will share back to you my dear brother okay okay thank you so much for the time brother tony so yeah. shall we end with a prayer yeah 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 sure okay uh, brother so one minute uh gobal brother om brother ashish brother good evening everybody yeah. okay hope uh, good evening brother hope uh, what brother uh, tony spoke today uh, was uh, really useful for for you so he spoke about the slave so how a slave uh, was there so what all the bible speaks about a slave and how uh, you see the slave had to be obedient to his uh, master and how jesus uh, was himself a servant you see uh, he was a servant to god and how uh, we are uh, you see purchased by the blood of christ and how uh, we need to be uh, obedient to god isn't it <clears throat> in olden days brother told that one just two minutes i'll take not more than that one uh, you see <coughs> whenever a, a slave was purchased so he was purchased for life okay only in the law of israel Uh, there was a law uh, that a slave has to be returned uh, during the uh, jubilee period but rest of the world if you see they were purchased for life uh, during those days uh. so we see uh, that uh, abraham had a slave uh, in his uh, you see uh, uh, what do you say in his uh, house <coughs> can anybody tell me who was the chief slave of abraham gopal brother home brother You you both are there online. Yes, brother. Okay, tell me who was the chief uh, servant of Abraham's house. I'll give you a clue. Oh, brother, I'll give you a clue. Okay. Okay. So he sent the chief servant to bring a bride for uh, Isaac. Tell me, who is that uh, chief servant? Couple brother, who went to bring uh, Rebecca to Isaac? I'm speaking about the Bible. El, uh, el, 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 Very good, Eliezer. Eliezer. Couple brother got it. Eliezer. Yes, brother Eliezer. Ah, very good. So, see, Eliezer did the work for his uh, master Abraham. You know, you know what was the rules during those days? Huh? Whenever a slave was purchased, if the master of the house did not have any heir, 
he did not have any son but the entire property we go to that uh, chief of the servants you know as per the rule now abraham's property should go to whom you know eliezer because abraham did not have any son but later when god promised him that is the time that uh, isaac was born so even then we can see that uh, all these things were known to eliezer when isaac was born he was still obedient to his master he did not feel that jealousy you see he did not feel that uh, anger and wrath uh, that isaac is born and ishmael is born that i lose all my portion you see that's all a great example for us uh, you see and the brother told on point no? during those days uh, they used to you see punch the ear of a slave you see now who actually pierces a ear whose ears are pierced uh, nowadays Hmm? Gopal, brother, tell me whose ears are pierced nowadays? Gopal, brother. Yes, brother. Tell me who actually pierces the ears nowadays? Gang leaders. Huh? <laughs> Gang leaders. <laughs> Gang leaders. Good, good. Super pointer. Apart from them. Is it male or female? Girls or boys? Girls, boys also, brother. <laughs> boys also. See, nowadays boys also, but actually originally it was only girls. Why? Have you ever thought? You see, the girls from their birth they used to pierce their ears. That means they used to be a servant to their father and mother. But after the marriage, when they go to their husband's house you see there was no work going out and working and something and all that so they had to be submit to their husbands that was the meaning of a servant that means they need to be submit to their master so father was a master mother was a master and later husband was a master now now this is become a fashion today brother told now huh? you see gang leaders gangsters they put <laughs> earrings huh? they are servant for what for crime you see and all uh, sorts of uh, you see uh, uh, wrong things uh, they are a leader and they are uh, you see slaves for that one okay now now to whom should we be a slave tell me to whom yes, should we be a slave christ very good isn't it see apostle paul says just one verse in uh, Uh, one minute. Book of Galatians, verse seventeen, brother. Ah, huh. Galatians six seventeen, brother. Ah, huh. can anybody read, brother? Galatians six seventeen. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the no, spirit. No, no, no. Galatians were not. Uh, uh, you see, you're reading Ephesians probably. See, Galatians six seventeen. From henceforth, from henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Ah, the marks of Jesus. This is the marks that He has opened our ears, and we are His slaves. Only when, only when we start obeying our master correct now now should we obey our master or not yes we should correct jesus said my sheep hears my voice very good so we fear the sheep of the lord we will definitely give heed to his words psalms 45 psalms 45 Psalms 45, verse 10. Psalms 45, 10, brother. Gopal, brother, you have the Bible? Can you read? Is it possible? Uh, yes, brother. Psalms 45, 10, brother. Uh, Here can, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. Ah, incline the ear. 
forget also thy nows and thy father's people. Correct now? Huh? Now who is our father? Who was our father? Hey, you, you don't know who is our father. Huh? Who was our father? Before we came to the truth, who was our father? Devil. Devil. Huh? Correct. Devil. Correct. Satan. Correct, no, brother? Huh? Mm -hmm. Which is the yeah. Satan's house? Which is his house? Huh? This world, Adam. You see, Adam and the devil, we were his children. Correct, no? So, which is his house, if you see? This earth. We need to forget what? Huh? This house, his house. Correct, no? Uh, if we need to go to a heavenly salvation, we need to forget the earthly salvation. Now, who are his, uh, who are uh, own people? Now, who are these own people? Huh? Who are these own people? We, do we have any own people for us? Tell me. Think. Maybe relatives. Huh? Maybe relatives. Ah, relatives. Huh? So many right. friends in the churches. Correct, no? We have so many friends in the churches, no? Yes, brother. Do they obey the truth? Do they listen to the truth? <laughs> uh, uh, then we need to forget. Uh, you see, dear brethren, this is the sacrifice we need to do for the Lord. If you want to stand for the truth, if you want to obey the truth, you see, if you want to work for the heavenly salvation, Dear brother, we need to follow the Lord. What did Jesus say? Deny yourself. <clears throat> Carry the cross and follow me. Okay? Thank you. So, ultimately, sorry brother, they want to see you. If you can on your video, it will be very helpful for them. <clears throat>